Hey, welcome to Church LV Online. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home. Really believe that God has a word for you today. Really quick, if it's your first time here, go ahead and grab your phone, text church fam to the number 94,000. Wherever you are, you can get connected with us here at Church LV. Really believe that God has a word for you today. We believe here at Church LV, our mission is to lead people to encounter new life in Jesus. And wherever you're at, God can bless you today. Let's grab a notebook. Let's get ready. Lean in because we're excited for what God wants to do in your life today. God bless. I'm going to share something with you. I got about five points for you. I'm going I'm to preach quick so you Sunday-only church people are going to love this morning, right? <laughs> you go, yes, I got to sit in my favorite seat and the pastor will preach quick. I'm going get to get to brunch on time today. I'm going to be in Matthew 4. I'm going to be in Matthew 4, okay? I'm going to bounce around a little bit, but I'm going to be in Matthew 4. I want to read this really quick, and then I want to go back through it and touch on some things. Got about five points for you. Is that all right? You guys good with that? Seven Hills, y'all good with that? All right. Verse 1, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. I'm going to read it. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and for 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time the devil came to him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No. The Scriptures say people do not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the Scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Verse 7, Jesus responded, The Scriptures also say you must not test Yahweh your God. You ever see in your Bible where the, the name Lord, or the words Lord are all capitalized? Well, that, that's, that's there. It's his name, Yahweh. Yahweh is his name. He's a personal God. I know him. I know him, you know, so I'm going to call him by name if y'all are okay with that. I've had people say, are you Jewish now? No, I'm not. You know, I, I, I just, I'm going to call God by his name, okay? <laughs> Verse 8, next the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said if you will kneel down and worship me. Verse 10 says, get out of here, Satan. That's what Jesus told him. For the scriptures say you must worship Yahweh, your God, and serve only him. Then the devil went away, and the angels came and took care of Jesus. I pray right now, Jesus, that you would speak through me because there is something you want to say to some people. Holy Spirit, would you come into this place? Would you touch on everything you want to touch on, not everything I want to touch on? Thank you. Amen. All right. Verse one, I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to say this real quick. Then Jesus was led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that something? Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. If it was important for him, it's important for us. Come on. Jesus is perfect. Any of y'all perfect? Raise your hand. No. Yeah, yes, sir. I, I'm with you. <laughs> That's funny. I'll ask your wife later. Uh, <laughs> right? Jesus was perfect, is perfect. Sorry, is perfect. He's alive. He is perfect. And he was still led by the Holy Spirit. How much more do we need it? How much more do we need him in our life? How much more can we ask him to come? Every day we wake up, Pastor Michael hit on it. Every day, man, just say the name of Jesus. Man, call out, man. Let the Holy get a word from the Lord, right? Man, how much more do we need it? If Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit, sometimes we're led. Sometimes when we're led by the Holy Spirit, it doesn't it doesn't always end up in a perfect place. You ever notice that when 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 you were led to Las Vegas, was it perfect at the beginning? Was it was it? But did you all of a sudden have a pop up on a stage like the commercials like boom and you got to mic your hand? There's thousands of people. I doubt it started like that. If you've been here, you know their story. It did not start like that. They even went through loss, many losses to get to the point that they're at today, but they were led the whole time. They were walking in the promise of God. They were walking in what was divinely appointed for them, but that didn't mean it was easy. That didn't mean it got easier, right? 
Just because you decide to be a Christian doesn't automatically make life easy. Some of us give up. Well, I thought I was, but man, I'm just going to go back to live. Man, that's not the point. The point is he's going to work on you every single day. And after year, after year goes by, you're going to look back. You're not even going to be able to recognize the person that you saw. See, Holy Spirit came into my life. Jesus touched me in Fresno, California. I was laying on my face. He used a beautiful woman, okay? But she wrote me a letter, and it changed my life. And the Holy Spirit grabbed hold of me that day. And from that moment on, I don't even recognize that person. My wife says, I don't even know who that was because the man that you are today, that's, that's the Derek that I know. Just because I began to be led, right? Just because I began to let, it wasn't easy. I didn't all of a sudden get everything handed to me. Is that all right? Jesus was led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted there by the devil. Verse 2. For 40 days and for 40 nights, he ate nothing and became very hungry. Any of y'all remember what you did 40 nights ago? I don't remember what I did yesterday. Maybe I need to get a new helmet, but yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. What did I do yesterday? <laughs> Maybe I'm just tired. Lord, please, right? Okay. I don't remember. That's a long time. There's been a lot that's happened. Could you imagine being hungry that whole time? <laughs> Could you imagine? Some of y'all are like, man, I can't imagine being hungry in the next 30 minutes. Huh? I'm right there with you. My meta- I, as soon as I eat something, that thing cooks up like a fire, and I'm hungry again, right? I need to eat every minute. My, my wife, every time we go on vacation, she's like, Lord, please just let there be a gym, and please let there be food available at every turn. <laughs> because literally, I'll be on the beach and look at my client. I'm saying, all right, kids, get up. I know you're having the time of your life, but daddy needs a snack. Let's go. <laughs> I got a weight to maintain, all right? Come on. <laughs> all right? This, the, when you're hungry, them days probably felt longer, right? Could you imagine? He was probably desperate. Jesus was fully man and fully God. Fully man, fully God. So he experienced the emotions. He experienced the feelings that we feel as, as human beings. He experienced the pains, the sorrows, the joys. He experienced those things that we experience here today. But he was also fully man, so he experienced that too, right? Completely natural, completely supernatural in one. You ever heard of the burning bush? Completely natural, completely supernatural. Ooh, that's a foreshadow into something. Y'all could take a look at that. Completely natural, completely su- coexisting. Did you know the natural and the supernatural were meant to coexist? And it wouldn't burn you up. Instead, it would fill you up. Instead, it would be glorious. Oh, come on. That's a different. I, I got to stay on task. I got to stay on this. I, I almost went to Exodus. No, I was kidding. <laughs> Here we go. He was hungry. He was desperate. Then the devil came and he said, if you are the son of God, change these stones into loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not need bread. Uh, People need more than bread for their life. They need, they must feed on every word of God. First point I want to ask you is what are you desperate for? What are you desperate for? Think about it. Think about it. Take yourself for a second. Really, really engage today. What are you desperate for? Are you desperate for attention? Are you desperate? Are you desperate for success? Are you desperate for that job? Are you coveting something else? What, what, what are you coveting? What are you desperate for? That's my question to you today. Jesus was desperate for food. <laughs> he was hungry. It, it, the, I say it this way. Think about your own life right now. Really close your eyes and think about it and see what am I really desperate for in my life? If you really ask yourself that question, the answer should be Jesus. But I guarantee the answer for a lot of us isn't. Okay, how many of y'all know I'm desperate for a Super Bowl ring? <laughs> oh, buddy, I'm desperate. I'm going on eight years. I ain't got one yet. Huh? I'm still waiting on that ring. I even got my ring finger tattooed. Now, I'm not saying to get tattoos, kids, but... <laughs> I even got my ring finger tattooed because these hands are for one ring only. No, I'm just kidding, babe. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm desperate for that, but I don't seek that. I'm desperate for that thing, but that's not what I go after. I'm desperate for that thing, but that's not what's going to feed me up. See, I feed on every word of God. I feed on the life that God brings to me. Can I submit that to you? Can I submit something to you? Can we, what if we were so desperate for Jesus? See, there's a, there's a story in the Bible, a Syrian Phoenician woman, he, she wanted do, uh, her, healing for her daughter. 
And it's a long story short. She, Jesus basically calls her a dog, right? It's crazy. I don't know why, but it's nuts, right? And in this story, she even says, well, don't, even the dogs get to eat the scraps for, that fall off the table. If healing is a scrap, then what is the feast that sits on the table? See, if healing is a scrap, then what's the feast? Jesus is that feast. You guys want some healing. You guys want some, uh, some, some, some unity in your family. You guys want that kid to come back. You, you, want, you want to find someone to marry. You want, to, you, want, you, want, you want some decisions to be made. You want that job opportunity. Then seek Jesus. Enjoy the feast, and all of those things will just begin to happen. You see what I'm saying? What happened in the beginning? Adam was walking in a line with God. He was walking with God, and then God said that uh, he needs a helpmate. What was he doing? He was, he was aligned with God, serving God, walking in unity with God. Then the woman showed up. That's a word for somebody. You, you're, you're looking in the wrong places for your wife. You don't have to see. You don't have to search. You don't have to tender, swipe. I don't know which way is the good way, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what those things are. I never had to do it. All right. You don't have to do that. Walk in, walk in line with God. Come to men's prayer at 6.30 a.m. and see what God is trying to do with you. Serve Pastor Benny. Serve the church. Set up chairs. Go serve what God is doing. Be desperate for God and watch everything else realign in your life. Is that all right? Verse 5. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and he said, if, again, if you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, he's about, to, he's about to quote scripture, okay? He says, he, order, he orders his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands to keep you from striking your foot on a stone. I don't know how many of y'all were here the last time I spoke. Was anybody here the last time I spoke? Okay, okay. Y'all remember I said something about you could say the right thing in the wrong spirit. What, what the, devil, the devil is using the word of God, right? He's using the word of God in this. But he's saying it in the wrong spirit. He wants, he's trying to hurt Jesus. He's trying to, he's trying to make, make Jesus go, go, go out of what God has called him into, right? He's trying to, well, yeah, well, of course he's going to, it's not your time yet. You know, he'll protect you, right? Here, come on, just cut it. You see what I'm saying? I, 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 I've had dreams in my heart, and I had, I had a teammate one day tell me I had something stirring in my heart, and it's, it was from God, and I'll never forget it. He says, well, that's okay if it doesn't happen. That's just not the will of God in your life. Don't worry about it. What he said was like, he was trying to be good friend. He was actually trying to help. But what he didn't know is he didn't know that I was walking with God and I knew exactly what God said and that wasn't it. I knew that that promise was mine. And let me say this to you. Whatever promise God has put in your heart, no man can take that from you. It doesn't matter what they say to you. It doesn't matter what they bring up to you. No man can take what God has promised you unless you let them. You see, in this right here, I, I, I challenge you, don't fall victim to that. Don't fall victim to people saying the right thing in the wrong spirit to you. Don't fall victim to it. Please, 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 please understand that. Who are you listening to? That's my second point. Who are you listening to? See, Jesus in this moment, he responds. He says, the scriptures also say, do not test the Lord your God, right? That's what Jesus responds. Jesus is in tune with God. Can we agree with that? Jesus is God, right? Three in one. He's in tune. If we would just be in tune with God, it doesn't matter what voices come. We know what God is saying to us. It doesn't matter who comes to me and says, you should raise your kids like this. I'm going to say, thank you so much. God bless you. But I know how I'm supposed to raise my kid because I talked to God this morning about it. I, 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 you need to do this for your wife. No, I know what I need to do for my wife, and she should feel like the biggest queen in the whole world because God has already shown me how to love my wife. Some of y'all need to start treating your wives like God's daughter. That is God's daughter. And y'all see, y'all need to start treating her like it. It's not your possession. It's not just yours. Yes, is she your wife or yes, but y'all are one. If y'all want to go forward, you have to go together. The only way I go forward in life is if she comes with me, right? The only way she goes forward is if I go with her. So we got to be on the same page. What? Or as Coach Gruden would say, on the same what? And we all say page, right? He does that. He never finishes his sentences. We do it for him, right? It's a beautiful thing. Who are you listening to? If we would just be in line with God, if we would just be in tune with him, if we would just know what he is saying, 
It doesn't matter who comes to us and says anything else. Does that make sense? Is that okay? I'm going to say this to you next. Verse 8. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him the nations of the world and all their glory. I will give it to you. I will give it all to you. As if it wasn't already Jesus, right? Come on. He said, if you will only kneel down and worship me. See, his, his scheme from the beginning wasn't for him to worship him. He's, he's trying to wear on him, right? He even used scripture. Even used, he even used, that. what are you listening to, right? What are you desperate for? And then if that didn't work, okay, now just worship me and I'll give you everything, right? Now, if I, that didn't work, man. Just worship me. I'll give it to you. I'll give you the keys to the world, right? Jesus says, get out of here, Satan. That's what Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Instantly, the devil went away and the angels came and cared for Jesus. Third point I want to say to you is what do you worship? Do you worship at all? <laughs> That's a question for some of y'all. Look, I don't know how many y'all, how many y'all have had a moment with God, like a real moment that you can say you have. If you haven't, it's okay. It's okay. Don't feel like shame or anything like that. Don't I, I, just keep your hands up. How many of y'all had a moment with God? Okay. This isn't for everybody, but this is for some of y'all. Then why don't you worship like it? Why don't we worship like he's real? It's because we're worried about everybody else. It's because we have too much pride. We're too selfish about what other people might think about us. Why in the world, if someone is a guest today, would they come in here and say, if we were all just standing there, just kind of going through our thing, thank the Lord we are not like that here at Church LV. If we were all just standing there going through it, they would be like, why do I need God if they're just not feeling? I mean, if it doesn't do anything for them, why do I need God? Right? Man, I have something to celebrate. I don't know about y'all, but I used to smoke weed. I used to sleep there and party this and do that. I used to do all those things. And my soul, my life trajectory was on the way to hell. Okay? My family is a, is a family of pastors, and I was on the way to hell. I'm okay to say that. Some people can't even say hell anymore. Like, oh my gosh, like it's not politically correct. Well, guess what? It's real, so deal with it. All right? But just as real as hell is, so is heaven. Okay? And Jesus came in my room in Fresno, California, and he touched me that day, and I've never been the same. And I'm going to worship like it. So I'm sorry if I offend you with my worship. I don't care what you think about me. I know my heart is right before God, and I'm going to give him everything that I have because he is worthy, he is good, he is faithful to endure until the end. Some of y'all have had a moment with God, but none of y'all act like it. How do you, man, how do you, how can you go out and tell, man, if I, if I didn't throw a ball, right, if I didn't practice at it, I'd look trash at it. So how can I have camps and teach kids how to do it if I couldn't do it well? How can I invite someone in and say, man, you need this? And they come to church and you stand there like this because you're nervous because they're there. Why do I need that? I already got that. I can go celebrate and be at the club and get excited. I can go do that. That's more exciting than watching you do this. That's way more exciting than watching you sing songs about Jesus. Like, I can go get excited somewhere else. Man, we get excited at the Raider games. I hear y'all. Sometimes I got to tell y'all to be quiet. Like, man, we're on offense. Shut up. <laughs> Get excited after we score. <laughs> you know, I got audibles to make. Right? I got to talk to Hunter. He needs to hear me. <laughs> All right. But some of y'all need, y'all have had moments with God, man. You need, you, man, you got something to praise, man. Don't we, don't we, don't you, who agrees with me on that? Oh, wow. Hey, okay then. Because I believe this. I'm going to say this, Pastor Benny, because I believe it with everything in me that Church LV. It is, but I feel like it's going to be even another wave of it. That, 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 that churches all around, I don't even think it's just in Las Vegas, maybe it is, but all around are going to look to this place. They're going to look to this place and say, that's how it's supposed to be done. They're going to look to this place and say, wow, that's what it's like to be free. Wow, that's what it's like to encounter God. Wow, that's what it's like to experience healing. Wow, that's what it's like. They're going to look to this church and say, wow, that is a people that really believes in the one and only true living God. I'm tired of going to churches where I'm like, do y'all even believe that he's alive? Man, these dry bones need to become flesh. <laughs> I'm telling you, he sent me to the valley, right? He sent me to the valley. Why? To proclaim his name. 
He sent me to the Bay Area. Why? To proclaim his name and show people what it's like to worship. I never forget when I went to church, I went to a church, I went to a certain church there. And I never forget something happened and I, I was about to stand up and walk out. I was righteously correct, right? And my wife like grabbed my leg, you know, and she saved me, right? And as I was sitting there, I was so upset because I was like, golly, why, you know, why'd that happen? And I'll never forget this is the Lord said, you're here to show people how to worship. Don't worry about what anybody else says. Ooh, I got so convicted. Oh, I got so convicted. So, so many times we get offended by what's happens up here, or we get offended by what's happening in somebody else's life. We get offended by the smoke or the lights. We get offended by someone shouting. We get offended by a word. We get, we get, we get offended too easily. Grow, grow up. All right, grow up. It's not all about you. It's not all about you. What it's about is Jesus being glorified. So if you trust the leadership, if you trust what's going on, if you trust their heart, if it doesn't have anything to do with you, just praise God that it's having to do with someone else. All right. But we got to be people that worship, man. When, when you went, man, I, I, I've been to church Friday night. I, I ain't like Pastor Benny. I, I didn't speak all week, but Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, morning, as I call it. This morning, I got another one after this, right? And, and I, right now, I'm so, I can't get enough. When you said, I hope we have Monday, Tuesday, man, I'll be here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be me, it'd be me and you, you know, singing. <laughs> the worship team might be a little tired, but we'll turn the phones on, man. I'll be here. I can't get enough right now because I'm, I'm, I'm watching what God is doing in other people's lives. And I, I just can't get enough. And I, that's something to work, that's something to praise. Anybody got something to praise? Anything worth praising? Some of y'all are in a valley right now. Guess what? The only way out, I know this from life experience, is to worship him. Tell him how good he is. Tell him how good he is. I went through years of heartache, people destroying my name, or let me say, people trying to destroy my name, people trying to come against me, people trying to, to, to squash me down. And at times, as in my flesh, I felt down. I felt crushed. Man, I felt like giving in. I was desperate. I was listening to the wrong things. I wasn't worshiping like I should. I was fighting battles. God said, I already won. Why are you fighting those battles? And I was wasting my time. And God kept telling me, you just worship me. So I would turn the music on in my house. Uh, my, my wife came in the other day, and my kids are literally jumping on me as I have worship music on. I'm on my knees, and they're jumping on me because they think I'm playing like a treehouse, right? And they, they're jump, and she has to like grab them, and be like, "All right, boys, let's let's let Dad do this for a second, right?" If you're in a valley, the only way out is worship. The only way out is Him. The only way out is to tell Him how good He is. Begin to shout His name. Begin to praise His name. I promise you, it may not happen today. It may not happen next week. It may not happen next month. It may not happen next year. It may take 10 years, right? But I promise you, as you begin to do it, he's going to do something in your heart. And once you go through that, there's nothing you can't go through. When my, when my son, Dallas, my oldest boy, was laying on a hospital bed, and I had a doctor tell me, I don't know if he's going to make it. I don't know if he's going to make it. I almost didn't get to celebrate Father's Day. I don't know if he's going to make it. Man, what did I do? I turn worship music on in the car, and I worship God, crying my eyes out for the life of my son. And I prayed, and I cried out. I said, Dear God, please don't take him from me. Please, dear God. That was a low moment, but I worshiped my way through it. And now he's seven years old in the kid's class right now. Come on. But listen, I, I, I'll never understand I'll never understand why sometimes things do happen and some things don't. The same time I watch families not get to take their kids home, I got to take mine home. Same hospital. That's why we still support Valley Children's Hospital. Still support them because I know what families go through. Okay, I lost my grandpa. He's the greatest man I ever known. Greatest, greatest preacher, greatest communicator. He's the best to everything. Right? Greatest man I've ever met. Man of integrity. At his funeral, I thought he only knew like 30 people. Man, there were thousands of people. There was no room to sit because of his outreach, right? And, uh, and I prayed very hard for him, and he didn't make it. But he told me, he said, don't worry about all that. You always go after God. You always go after him. And don't worry about if it doesn't happen, because sometimes it does, and you never know what God's trying to do in your heart, okay? Real quick, 
Point number four I got for you. So there's titles. You ever read in your Bible? Some of y'all would be like, ah, no. Um, okay. If you, get, if you get a Bible, okay, an actual one like with pages, not one you scroll through with your finger, get a Bible. See, my son starred this for y'all. He wanted us to talk about this the other day. All right. <laughs> if you ever look, there's little, like, there's little headlines at the beginning. This one before this was The Temptation of Jesus, okay? The one that happens directly after this, you know, what, you, know what, you know what it says? Directly after all this temptation happens, the ministry of Jesus begins. Imagine if he gave in. Imagine if it was too much for him. Come on, man. That right there is something worth celebrating. Thank you, God, you didn't give up. Thank you, Jesus, you, you endured. Thank you, Father. 2,000 some odd years later, we're still seeing the work of Jesus in our lives because he didn't give up. There's a picture my, brother's, my brother Darren always sends me. It's a, two guys, one here, one here, and they're in like this big cave and they're chopping at this rock, right? And he sends it to me after really hard losses when he knows, man, I know you've been, I know how hard you work. I know you're not getting the results you want. You know how hard it is for me to tell you I have more losses than wins as an NFL quarterback? You know how hard that is to admit? I'm not a loser. I'll tell you that right now. I am not a loser. So just saying that is like, ugh, right? Like that's disgusting, right? Every, every, every place I've been, I've won championships, all American this and player of the year that and MVP of this and Pro Bowls and all that. I, I, I'm top of my game, right? But when, but when it comes down to the most important stat, I, I, it just hasn't happened yet, right? And, and there's been some heavy losses where I just, man, not again, you know, like what else? Lord, I'll do it. I promise. Just tell me what else you want me to do. And my brother sends me this picture and it's one guy who's literally one hit away from this big old, big old cave of diamonds, one hit away. And he, he turns around, and he walks away, dragging his, he leaves the pickaxe and he's just walking away. He had enough. It was too hard for him. He couldn't endure anymore. There's another guy right under him. You could tell he's sweating and he's just gritting it out, right? Let me say this about the guy on top. Even if he finishes that, if he does it without God, all those diamonds are worthless. All of those things have no value. They're here today and gone tomorrow. They'll rust and they'll be gone. But if, but if he would do it with God, I guarantee he wouldn't have gave up. If he would do it with God, I guarantee he wouldn't have given up. He wouldn't have took it in the easy way. He wouldn't have went into someone else's thing and said, you do the work and then I'll finish it, right? No, no, see, there's been some work. There's been some foundations laid here with the Raiders, and I plan on finishing it. You see, you see what I'm saying? And I don't say that to get excited about a Super Bowl. I say that for you to get excited about your life. There has been work that you have laid. There have been prayers in your closet. There have been places where you've laid on your face, where you've cried out to God. And I'm telling you, if there's breath in your lungs, your story isn't over. Your story isn't over. It's a picture that he sends me to tell me, don't give up. He doesn't say any words with it. He just sends it to me. And I'm like, gosh, dang it, you're right. <laughs> but I don't want you to be right, man. I want to give up. It's easy to give up. We give up all the time nowadays. It's easy to give in, right? It's easy to say I'm done. Praise God Jesus didn't give up. Praise God that he saw it through because right after that, man, his ministry begins. Last point I want to share if the worship team will join me. Last point I want to share with you is this. This, what I read to you, was chapter 4 of Matthew, uh, of Matthew, right? I want to go back to the last verse in chapter 3. So this is the last verse, and then chapter 4 happens. The last verse in Matthew 3 is verse 17. It says, And a voice from heaven. Again, this is right after Jesus is baptized, and he comes out of the water. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. What, is, what does the enemy try to attack him with? He says, if you are the Son of God. If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into loaves of bread. If you are the Son of God, jump off, for, he, for the Scriptures say, right? If you are the Son of God. The, the enemy's scheme from all throughout time has never changed, from the beginning till now. And it's this. It, it's not at the beginning he just wants you to get to worship me, worship me, right? Right? That, that was the last thing he tried to get. Finally, he gave up. All right, worship me and I'll give you everything, right? 
But before all that, he says, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, I say this to you. Can I, can I, can I try, can I give this to you from my last point? That his scheme is this. All he's trying to do is get you to question who God says you are. What does God say about his son? He said, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. All throughout this, the enemy was just sneaking in. This little, this little quiet voice, if you are the son of God. Ah, oh, you're an alcoholic. Ah, oh, you, maybe, maybe, maybe you're addicted to pornography. Maybe he's whispering that to your mind. Maybe you're like, oh, well, are there generational blessings and cursings? Absolutely. There's some things we got to break free of. There's some things that we can push on and keep on. But, but just because your dad did it doesn't mean you have to do it. Just because, well, that's just what my family does. We get divorced. It's just what happens, right? It just, that's just what happens. And I'm not talking about what's happened before. I'm talking about today that there could be healing in Jesus' name. I'm here to remind you, God sent a little boy from Fresno, California, who had a dream in his heart to be an NFL quarterback and preach the word of God. He sent me to Las Vegas to remind you that you are sons and you are daughters of the living God. You are sons and you are daughters of the living God. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for church today. I want to give you a couple of ways to stay connected here at Church LV. First one is if you need prayer, go ahead and visit us at the prayer link at churchlv.com slash prayer. A member of our team is waiting and ready to pray with and for you. Second way is to join a small group. If you're not in a group already, get connected into community. Go ahead and visit churchlv.com slash groups. Last way to stay connected is to follow us on Instagram. On Instagram is where we're going to be posting all upcoming events and everything you need to stay connected with us here at Church LV. On our way out today, I want to declare some truths over you. God, you are in control. We cast our anxieties on you because you care for us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may he make his face shine upon you. God bless.